In 2025, Huawei isn't just rolling out new gadgets, it's rewriting the playbook for global tech. While the West debates export bans and AI regulation, Huawei has quietly launched its most ambitious move yet, an operating system that no longer depends on Android or any American software at all. Meet Harmony OS 5 and Harmony OS Next, the core of Huawei's new tech empire. This isn't a UI skin or a forked version of Android. It's a from-scratch ecosystem, now running on Huawei laptops, phones, smartwatches, and even electric vehicles. And it's growing. Fast. With Harmony OS Next, Huawei is officially dropping Android support entirely, starting with its flagship smartphones. Instead, it's pushing for a fully native app environment. The MateBook Pro and MateBook Fold, the first Harmony-powered laptops, are now on sale in China. No Windows, no Google. Total platform control. This isn't just a product launch, it's a geopolitical signal. As the US-China tech rivalry intensifies, Huawei is betting that a vertically integrated sovereign tech stack is the future. The real question isn't whether it can succeed in China, it's whether the world is ready for a third global tech ecosystem. Huawei has officially stepped into a space once thought off limits, the world of personal computing without Windows. In May 2025, the Chinese tech giant unveiled two new laptops, the MateBook Pro and the MateBook Fold, both running on Harmony OS 5. Huawei's self-developed operating system. This marks a major departure not only from Microsoft's dominance in the PC OS space, but also from Huawei's past dependence on Western platforms. Let's begin with the basics. The MateBook Pro is Huawei's premium traditional laptop offering. It features a 14.2-inch OLED touchscreen with a 3.1K resolution and a 120Hz refresh rate. It comes in configurations of 24GB or 32GB of RAM, and up to 2 TB of SSD storage. From a hardware perspective, it's clearly aimed at power users, professionals, developers, and enterprise customers in the Chinese market. But the real news lies inside the software. Instead of Windows, this machine runs Harmony OS 5, Huawei's fully integrated operating system designed for phones, tablets, smartwatches, and now laptops. It's optimized for multi-device workflows, native Huawei services, and system-level AI tools like the Xiaoyi Assistant. The key differentiator? This OS isn't built on Windows or Android. It's written from scratch with a focus on seamless device communication and complete independence from US licensed tech. The second model, the MateBook Fold, is arguably even more futuristic. With an 18-inch OLED foldable display, this laptop can transform between a full-screen creative workspace and a compact, tablet-sized productivity device. When unfolded, it's just 7.3 millimeter thick, thinner than many smartphones, and weighs around 1.16 kilgos. It too comes with up to 32 GB of RAM and 2 TB of storage, and of course, runs on Harmony OS 5. What's important here is not just the specs, it's the strategy. These devices are launching exclusively in China, where Huawei enjoys both market trust and regulatory insulation. But they're making a much bigger statement globally. Huawei no longer needs Microsoft. For decades, Windows has been the unshakable foundation of the global PC market. Even Apple, with Mac OS, plays within the same developer environment thanks to browser compatibility, Adobe tools, and shared chip architecture. But Harmony OS 5 breaks with that completely. It doesn't just replace the interface, it replaces the rules. The system is tightly integrated with Huawei's larger ecosystem, smartphones, tablets, smart TVs, wearables, and even cars. File sharing, screen extension, peripheral control, all happen natively without third-party apps. It's Apple's continuity feature on steroids, but designed with China's infrastructure and data laws in mind. From an investor's point of view, the implications are enormous. First, Huawei is clearly doubling down on vertical integration. By owning the entire stack, hardware, software, cloud, they gain resilience in the face of sanctions and global uncertainty. The company no longer needs to negotiate licenses with Microsoft, Google, or Intel. It can innovate at its own pace, in its own ecosystem. Second, the move positions Huawei for dominance in enterprise and education markets across China. State institutions are increasingly encouraged to abandon foreign operating systems in favor of domestic alternatives. Harmony OS 5, now in laptop form, fills that vacuum perfectly. Over time, this could severely undercut Microsoft's stronghold in the Chinese PC space. Third, there's the export play. 
While these laptops aren't being sold internationally yet, Huawei is planting seeds for long-term expansion. Countries aligned with China's tech policies, or simply looking for non-US alternatives, may see Harmony OS-powered PCs as a strategic fit. Yes, Harmony OS is still in early stages on desktop. Compatibility challenges, software availability, and developer adoption remain hurdles. But the intent is clear. Huawei is building a parallel tech universe, one product at a time, and the MateBook Pro and Fold are just the beginning. Harmony OS 5 isn't just another operating system. It's Huawei's strategic answer to one of the most pressing questions in the modern tech world. What happens when a global tech company is cut off from the US software stack? Let's be clear, Harmony OS is not a modified version of Android. While earlier iterations included some compatibility layers with Android apps, Harmony OS 5 is a fundamental shift. It's built on Huawei's own microkernel architecture, optimized for low latency, secure device communication, and real-time distributed processing. In practical terms, Harmony OS 5 is designed to seamlessly integrate multiple devices — phones, tablets, watches, smart TVs, cars, and now laptops — into a single interconnected ecosystem. Huawei refers to this as super device functionality. Instead of each device acting independently, Harmony OS treats all of them as nodes in a larger network. Your phone can instantly become a remote control for your laptop. Your tablet can extend your display. Your smartwatch can transfer files to your TV, all without external apps or drivers. This kind of architecture gives Huawei a key strategic advantage in a world that's moving rapidly toward multi-device experiences and IoT-centric living. And it mirrors, to some extent, what Apple has done with iOS and macOS, except Huawei is doing it on a much broader scale and in a completely different geopolitical context. From a developer perspective, Harmony OS 5 introduces ArcTS, a new programming language that allows devs to write cross-device applications with a single code base. Huawei is providing development kits, SDKs, and native libraries optimized for its ecosystem. This means app developers can write once and deploy across smartphones, laptops, tablets, and even smart appliances. That's powerful, especially for countries where Huawei hardware is widespread and growing. For the average consumer, Harmony OS 5 promises speed, battery efficiency, and security. According to Huawei, apps open faster, multitasking is smoother, and system-level security is enhanced through encrypted sandboxing and isolation zones between tasks. But perhaps the most important feature of Harmony OS 5 is what it doesn't include. Any dependency on US tech companies. No Google Play services. No Android base layer. No Microsoft runtime libraries. It's not just a technical decision, it's a political firewall. In China, where data localization, digital sovereignty, and supply chain security are now national imperatives, Harmony OS 5 fits like a glove. It aligns with the Chinese government's push for Ziju Kakong Jiju, technology that is self-developed and controllable. For that reason alone, Harmony OS has a huge tailwind in its home market. But this also sets the stage for international expansion particularly in regions where Huawei has built deep infrastructure ties, like Southeast Asia, Africa, and Latin America. These are markets where US tech doesn't always dominate, and where governments are increasingly open to alternatives. So, what we're seeing isn't just a new OS, it's a strategic platform play. Huawei is building not just products, but a post-American digital ecosystem that could eventually rival Android and Windows, at least in parts of the world. The laptop launch is the latest milestone, but Harmony OS 5 is the core of the entire vision, a vision that's only gaining momentum. The breakup is now official. Huawei is done with Android. With the rollout of Harmony OS Next, the company is abandoning any remaining compatibility with Google's mobile platform. This is no longer a soft detachment. It's a hard fork. And it could change the mobile landscape in ways many Western observers still underestimate. For years after the U.S. sanctions, Huawei continued to ship phones running a forked version of Android, essentially AOSP, Android Open Source Project, without Google services. It kept the interface familiar for users while quietly building its own alternatives. App Gallery instead of Google Play, Pedal Maps instead of Google Maps, and so on. But with Harmony OS Next, Huawei is cutting the cord entirely. 
There is no Android base, no support for APK apps, and no reliance on US code, not even open source. Instead, it's moving to a fully native app framework, built from scratch for Huawei's ecosystem. The first smartphone to run Harmony OS Next out of the box is expected to be the Huawei Mate 70, launching in late 2025. According to early developer builds, the OS runs faster, uses less power, and offers tighter security than its Android predecessor. But it's also starting from near zero in terms of apps. Android apps won't run, period. This is a huge risk, but one Huawei seems willing to take. To compensate, the company has launched a massive developer outreach campaign, offering incentives, toolkits, and financial support to app makers willing to build native Harmony OS Next applications. As of Q2 2025, Huawei claims it has over 15,000 Harmony native apps, with a target of 100,000 by year-end. This mirrors what Apple did in the early 2010s when it aggressively expanded its app store. Only Huawei is doing it without the global developer goodwill Apple had, and in an environment of geopolitical tension and regulatory scrutiny. So why do this at all? Because Harmony OS Next represents the final phase of digital sovereignty. By cutting ties with Android, Huawei gains full control of its platform, from the user interface to the security protocols to the monetization pipeline. It no longer needs Google's permission, nor does it risk losing access to core technologies via sanctions or export bans. From China's perspective, this is more than a business decision. It's a national strategy. By pushing Harmony OS Next across phones, tablets, and even cars, Huawei is helping China build a closed-loop tech stack immune to foreign influence. It's a blueprint others could follow. From an investor lens, Harmony OS Next is a long-term bet with short-term costs. App fragmentation, limited global rollout, and lack of developer adoption outside China are real hurdles. But if Huawei can achieve critical mass domestically, and it looks like it might, then Next becomes a foundation for global expansion. In short, Huawei isn't just replacing Android. It's replacing the entire Western mobile software paradigm. And it's doing so at a time when emerging markets are actively looking for alternatives. Harmony OS Next is a moonshot. But in 2025, it's already left the launch. Harmony OS. Next isn't just about ditching Android. It's about building something much bigger. A fully integrated ecosystem that spans phones, tablets, wearables, TVs, laptops, and even vehicles. Huawei is no longer just a device manufacturer. With Harmony OS Next, it's positioning itself as a platform company, one that controls every layer of the user experience across every screen you touch. This is the real value behind Harmony OS. It's a single code base running across multiple hardware types connected by what Huawei calls a distributed architecture. It allows any Harmony OS powered device to talk to any other one instantly. No third party apps, no cables, no cloud handoff, just seamless communication. Here's what that looks like in practice. You receive a video call on your Huawei phone and swipe it over to your TV in one motion. Your MateBook Fold detects your smartwatch nearby and syncs notifications and health data without asking. A Harmony OS tablet acts as a secondary screen for your Huawei laptop, complete with stylus support and shared clipboard. In the car, Harmony OS powers the infotainment system and navigation, and continues your podcast exactly where you left off at home. This type of experience isn't entirely new. Apple has built a similar model with iOS, macOS, and watchOS. But Huawei is doing it across more device categories, with tighter hardware-software integration and tailored for China's massive digital infrastructure. As of mid-2025, Huawei reports that over 800 million devices are running Harmony OS globally, including everything from entry-level phones to smart TVs and IoT gadgets. And now, with the introduction of Harmony OS Next, Huawei plans to unify them even further under a fully native US independent ecosystem. That means one app can now run on a phone, then scale up to a TV or laptop screen, and adjust behavior based on hardware context. For developers, this is a game changer. It lowers cost, increases reach, and offers new UX possibilities. For Huawei, it's a way to build platform lock-in at scale. The more devices you own in the Harmony OS family, the more value you get, and the harder it becomes to leave. From an investment perspective, this has two major implications. 
recurring revenue through services, subscriptions, and app purchases. Huawei can now control its own app store, cloud storage, music, video, and productivity services, just like Apple does. Defensive moat in a politically volatile environment. With this level of platform control, Huawei becomes less vulnerable to sanctions or software restrictions, something Western competitors like Google and Microsoft still have to consider when entering politically sensitive markets. The big picture? Huawei is no longer just adapting to a post-sanction reality. It's architecting its own digital nation with rules, products, and platforms that function completely outside of Western systems. Harmony OS Next isn't just software, it's Huawei's declaration of independence. And with an ecosystem this wide, it may soon become too big to ignore, even outside China. Huawei isn't just making products, it's building a parallel world. With Harmony OS 5 powering its first laptops, and Harmony OS Next marking a clean break from Android, Huawei is setting the foundation for an entirely independent digital ecosystem, one that spans smartphones, wearables, PCs, TVs, and even vehicles. This isn't just about convenience or UX, it's about sovereignty, technological, economic, and geopolitical. In a global market increasingly divided along ideological lines, Huawei is making its move. A vertically integrated platform, aligned with China's domestic strategy, and positioned to scale globally in regions that are looking for alternatives to U.S. tech dominance. For investors, this signals more than just product innovation. It marks the beginning of a bifurcated internet, where software stacks, app stores, and data infrastructure diverge between East and West. The question now isn't whether Harmony OS will succeed in China, it's how far it will go beyond China's borders. And who's going to follow? If you found this breakdown valuable, make sure to subscribe, hit the bell, and leave a comment below. We'll be tracking Huawei's next moves, because in this tech cold war, knowing who's building what may be just as important as knowing where to invest next.